Good day, I am Jacqueline Bitton presenting this research paper entitled From Decades to Epochs, Spanning the Gap Between Geodesy and Structural Geology of Active Mountains by Richard Almendinger, John P. Loveless, Matthew E. Pritchard, and Brendan May. Let's start with a brief introduction. Geodetic data from the Global Navigation Satellite System or GNSS and Satellite Interferometric Radar or INSAR are altering our understanding of immediate tectonic deformation but the implication for long-term finite strain in organic belts remain unclear. We discussed two methods for analyzing geodetic data, velocity gradient fields which can be used to extract strain, dilatation, rotation rate, and elastic block modeling which assume that the deformation is not continuous occurs primarily on networks of interconnected faults separating quasi-rigid blocks. These methods are complementary. Velocity gradients are purely kinematic and provide information about regional deformation. The calculation does not account for faults or rigid blocks. However, when GNSS data is dense enough, Active faults and stable block emerge naturally in the solution. Block modeling uses known structural geometry and idealized earthquake cycles model to forecast slips rates on active faults. Future technical developments should eliminate many of today's uncertain uncertainties and give a wealth of fresh data to mine by making observations denser, more uniform, and temporarily consistent. Structural geologists have always wished to examine the real-time formation of structures such as how fold limbs rotate, how do fold damage zones evolve, how do extensional detachment and truss belt decomments operate. A slew of other issues might be raised concerning various structural processes. The majority of structural ge geology entails interpreting processes based on the finite strain at the deformation's endpoint to extract interpretation of incremental strain and insight into processes, clever approach have been created, ranging from growth stratum geometry to curve fibrous minerals in pressure shadows and veins, as well as sophisticated computational, mechanical, and kinematic models. The space-based geodesy allows to sample in real time the surface consequences of ongoing structural processes. This capacity appears to be uniformitarianism to structural geology. The mechanisms that the researchers observe in operation now should be the same as those responsible for the earlier structures visible in mountain belts, despite the fact that geodetic data from the GPS or the Global Positioning System and Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar or INSAR has been widely available for two decades, structural geologists still use it sparingly. The difference between traditional structural geology and geodesy is due to two fundamental causes, both of which are connected to the fact that most of the geodetic signal that is perceived is tied to the earthquake cycle. The first is that a major portion of the deformation is elastic. The researchers need, still need to grasp how this non-permanent, infinitesimal strain compares to the permanent. Finite strain that structural geologists are more accustomed with Second, it has only two decades or less of space geodesy that earthquake cycle on plate borders last 100 to 200 years, and in continental interiors, it can last over 1,000 years. The simplest way to analyze deformation from inherently kinematic geodetic data and that which is most comfortable to many structural geologists is to calculate gradient and in the velocity field. Repeat surveys of geodetic monuments have shown the deformation of Earth's surface caused by tectonic processes for more than a century. The introduction of space-based geodetic measurements has enabled these surveys to be carried out more often, intensively, precisely, and across bigger portion of the Earth. The researchers discussed that they have learned so far regarding the link between geodetic and structural geology findings. They look at the most prevalent analytics approaches employed today, as well as the difficulties and artifacts associated with them. For each of these approaches, considerations like spatial scale and the continuous or discontinuous character of surface deformations are critical. Current breakthroughs in understanding earthquake and volcanic processes, as well as regional tectonics, highlights the importance of dealing with geodetic data from a geo geological perspective.
Space-based genetic data has the potential to transform our knowledge of active structures. Many uncertainties surround the interpretation of this data, including whether the majority of the deformation occurs on networks of massive faults separated by relatively steep elastic blocks. How does geographical sample distribution influence our senses of deformation? Have clear analogies for structural geologies in the setting of limited strain? How many stress faults must be included too? That sums up the research paper entitled From Decades to Epochs, Spanning the Gap Between Geodesy and Structural Geology of Active Mountains. Once again, I am Jacqueline Viton. Thank you.